15 plus 1 game. I'm going to keep it simple, just capture, try not to have any complications. I'm going to capture again, gambit in all the way through the game the opponent is. And I think that should do it, shouldn't it? So just push through the centre now. Bring the bishop out. I think I'm trying to develop my creative thinking. As you know, I've been looking at this logical creative side of my game, and the creative side does cause me a little bit of a problem in a sense of it does over over analyze and over predict, and basically it's almost like you know if you wake up on a morning time. And you're walking in the street, yeah, you could get run over by a bus. That's what it sort of creates. It creates that scenario where um, everything is almost doom and gloom, so there's no point in actually making a move. So then, the moves I do end up making are based on just just dipping my toe in the water, you know, really tentatively when there's really no need. Because if you're gonna get run over by a bus, then it's 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 a high probability that you're not going to. That's the key thing I need to be saying to myself. Because the creative brain takes over. Yes, there's potential for the pawn to push onto the bishop. In the meantime, I can develop my knight. He does have this bishop that potentially is coming here to attack that position. So my creative brain goes into overdrive because of the potential for what the opponent could do. But I'm going to just develop the knight. Because logically, yeah, that's a, that's a move away, but I do have defense. I have a queen that can protect the knight. Unless he finds a fancy way of getting rid of this pawn so that he can then take the knight for free in some aspect. I've got a pawn don't mind doubling my pawns up so why would I be thinking I'm going to get run over by a bus when I'm doing everything to prevent that type of situation and it's a long way off anyway really got to reframe my mind I found that out from my own evaluation of my games um, more currently yep so like he's dropped the pawn to attack the knight Okay, so nothing to worry about on that score. We can simply take this pawn here. Yes, it's going to develop his knight. His knight then would be in a space to... It's not attacking any other pieces. So we could take the pawn. If the knight does take, we can take his queen. So there's more positives than negatives there. So I'm actually going to grab. Because the discover check on the knight, I'm not worried about anymore so he does take so we can take the queen with a check on his king so his king can't go and castle so we get the 20 pointer so we can go on queenside castle i believe yep with a check on his king with the rook
so more positives came out of that than negatives probably looking to come here with the bishop just about to say that uh, his knight blocks but at least we've developed our bishop then our knight can potentially come here but his knight will be there so it'll prevent that so we can't really go and attack this pawn there's no point in doing that unless of course we went the other way uh, no. let's just attack for now just to give them something to think about because I find that I found I get myself into these nice positions in the recent games that we've um, shown and I get those lovely positions but then it's often not seeing the correct continuation don't want to be a tactics man so it's not about that um, it's about getting those positions and then being able to keep those good positions and keep pressing those good positions uh, based on proper chess strategy findings not tactics where it's like a memorized type um, tricks type of thing I'm not a tricks player um, I want to play proper chess with the strategy position play planning etc some may say that is tactics but there's a, to me there's a fine difference between the tactics and actually playing proper chess okay so it's our go so the knight does come through we can take or we can develop our knight and attack his knight because if we attack his knight he can't move because he's got the check on the king so I'm going to do that obviously he can put a fork on both our pieces here so he's probably going to get our bishop but I'm thinking the compensation is the fact that we can take the knight here I suppose in a way he doesn't have to take back with the bishop but we've got discovered check so the knight can go anywhere just that I don't think it can take much it can take the pawn here I suppose could take the pawn in front here as well with a check but then the no because this pawn is there so it'll probably just be this pawn yeah so he's going for the fork so I'm going to take we can take the bishop with the pawn so if he takes with the bishop like we say we can take here with a check so it's nothing at all we can't take that one because the king will just take that is there anything else can we take can we go for his bishop oh we could go for his bishop yeah so we'll get the bishop back then in that sense or do we dun, dun, dun. yeah So this is us <clears throat> trying now to not ignore the creative thinking. We need that because that's the thing that puts the... Yeah, so we're going to go for and get the bishop back in a sense on this one. King doesn't come to defend. Let's go here. Knight's defending this bishop so that's not too much to worry about. But although his knight can actually take our knight... Oh, I didn't actually see that. Damn 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 that was flowing quite nicely and then I just realized this knight can actually take our knight well it's a new thing we're practicing trying to um, keep the creative thinking down but it's got its place you know when that bus is coming we want to move out of the way <laughs> oh look at that uh, we get a nice little pin thing here but uh, I don't think we're majorly down at all in any way shape we're actually plus one after all of that so again what we're worrying about <laughs> okay so if we come if we take the knight rook takes then our rook can pin his bishop to his uh, rook we could bring the bishop here with a check on his king so that seems to be a bit of a waste of a tempo though. So he could bring his king here. His king can go anywhere. Well, goes there. Or he can go here. 
probably going to want to come off of the by squares, come onto the dark square. We don't have any other checks. If he comes onto the dark square, the knight can put a check on. Knight can put a check on. There he goes here. Oh no, actually, you know what? He's just going to drop the pawn. What am I on about? Yeah, so he drops the pot on then what do you do then? Just take the knight. Take the knight, the rook's then protecting the square that the rook would want to go to to put the check on the king. So we may as well just take the knight off the board. Try to find some fancy tactics. Let's just go here, pin the bishop, keep it basic. So after all those manoeuvres we came back to the single movement that we were going for which was pinning the bishop. Way too arty, that creative mind thing. I mean it's nice being able to do it because you might be able to find uh, a beautiful position at the end of it all. It's just that it does generate a lot of fear because of the potential of what the opponent can do to you and it makes you then do moves that you're not really sure about and it's trying to be too safe when sometimes you have to be a little bit maverick not overly creative as this let's see now so we're going to keep it simple just bring this rook here so we're supporting so could look to get the rook off if need be it's getting closer now so that he can move his bishop so if we go here with the check and take the rook off with a check. It's not no big biff, but we can get the pawn off here. So he's moved, so we can actually come with the knight, but he's just gonna drop down onto the knight. Let's do it anyway, checks first type thing. Creative mind is going yes, so once he when he drops, when he's drops there, we go here, but then his pawns just drop in. Pawns dropping onto the pawn. This king is in the middle of the board. Um, let's go here. Oh, do you know, missed opportunity again. Overthinking on the small potatoes when the big potatoes are right there in front of my face. Look at that. Doosh. I'd have been on two pawns now. Not going to get that time back unless the opponent doesn't see it we're already on this pawn here so maybe we shouldn't be too greedy okay so i'm gonna grab this pawn so that's a bit happier happy happy so now it's obviously attacking this pawn but i don't think we're gonna get gonna get away with that one so happy to come back could come here with a check on the king it just feels a bit congested but I don't think there's anything that can attack the knight Bishops come down, knight can still come and put a check on here. And this king just comes up and attacks the knight. <clears throat> yeah, don't really like congesting in, so we could come this way, but then he gets our pawn here with his rook. Or does he? We box clever. His bishop's in the middle of the board. If we grab, his rook comes across, then we can take this pawn here, supporting the knight. But we are on a dark square, and his bishop is a dark square bishop, so he could come back and attack. We can swing our rook back over to here, attacking the pawn, giving our knight space to move, but then his king comes in for the kill because his king just has to move over to here then my knight is kind of trapped I believe so we go up there our knight can't get out because he can't go here can't go there
Yes. Bit of a trap situation there, isn't it? Maybe we leave that pawn alone. I'm coming back here. Don't really like the picture of the end result of all that. That might be the creative brain creating too much drama, but there's a situation where I think the knight could if it end up getting trapped. So I'll come back, we're attacking the bishop. So that's a plus for the creative mind. It does give you that aspect of being able to be creative up to a point. But then it can overcreate your brain, which causes a problem. So now that we know this, we can use it to our benefit, I believe anyway. It's not saying we're winning as usual, it's just a matter of trying to improve the quality of my game. And as we've seen, we've been through quite a few concepts to build up a, a, a good holistic type of concept for ourselves. And with the mantra, 2017, then the answer, 2019-ish, yep. And now we're looking at shaking that concept up and just adding in from evaluation the sort of weak areas that need to be worked on which is keeping it logical and creative but making sure that the creative is logical working for us and with all of that stuff it's all meshed together so at any given moment any given time on the board that you're playing the position that you're playing any one of those types of concepts can help you so he's moved the bishop oh bless him and he spent a bit of time on that move as well uh, let's grab the bishop here oh I think he felt that it was definitely getting away he's going to start giving up pieces now so the rook doesn't really have any threat on this pawn grab here oh, just from that one move one mistake and this pawn's really not doing any damage per se so I don't need to worry about that just grab here what things to worry about and so it, the king's defending the pawn if he pushes down we can push up so again that's nothing to worry about so I'm going to just bring my rook here with a check on the king and can, can push the pawn but this pawn isn't supported at the moment so I don't want to overthink the situation his king can squeeze down here have to be mindful of any kind of matey type things but my king is not in the line of fire don't want to be overzealous just going to attack this pawn here also trying to squinch the king Gary but he can still get to this point and he's not falling for any of that so looks like he's coming for these pawns on the bottom here so we'll take here just taking it easy a bit at a time yeah so he's trying to close down my king area so that his rook can come here and then get a checkmate type situation so it's all good in the hood let's put a check on the king here moves across to go for this pawn doesn't it's still going to move across to get that pawn so there's probably no reason for me to do that type of movement <laughs> just push the pawn up because the knight's protecting this area so if he's going to continue with the rook coming here we do have a defense so there's nothing to worry about creatively in any sense logic dictates that there's no point in that particular attack so even if he's coming with a fancy attack it really don't make any difference so he's now looking to try and block off these pawns and king's going to come here for this pawn if we come with the rook check on the king but we can at least take his pawn off
Yeah, so he's moved. Night can put a check on. Just take his pawn off for now. Then attack his rook. He can take because then he gets the knight off the ball, but we've got a few pawns that can go running around the place. So he's not actually doing that. Okay, let's push. Are they hoping I lose on time or something? I've got four minutes here, four minutes fifty-one. Let's push the pawn here. Two linked pawns against the rook usually is quite interesting. Okay, so his king can't get past this area because of the situation we've got with it. Let's go here with a check. can see where I'm trying to go with this yep. and could go for his rook he can take our rook and then we can just ramp those pawns up so if we go like this now that's been a little bit creative but it looks fairly safe to me is moved out of the way okay so we can bring our rook maybe just to here like this just blocking off any attempt at some back rank checkmate thing of some sort really quite distant <laughs> back rank checkmate but never mind So we're going for a nice slow plod with this. I have seen games like these totally fluffed, even by myself. Well, maybe not as bad as this, but shall we, shall we, shall we? Let's go here all the way across to here. Still believe he's trying to get his rook to come down here to do something somehow. <laughs> so yeah, so two linked pawns. If we can get those cajoled up, we do have three pawns here that aren't even started yet. We could start pushing them to give them something else. To, yeah, <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> I do believe he thinks there's some sort of checkmate thing going on here. And I have to be very careful because there might be. But at this moment in time, I, I just don't see it. He'd need to have his king here, which is probably going to push down, but the knight is protecting that square. He'd need to have his king around about there to be able to get the checkmate, because that is like a checkmate position. So that's the only thing he's probably hoping for. I can just try and push my pawns up. Be funny if he did get some checkmate somehow. <laughs> but I can't see it at the minute. He can still bring his rook here, yeah, but it's not a checkmate. So he could try to come around this side here to then come down. So that that's the type of thing he's probably looking at. So we're going to just take it easy and just give our king a flight square. Because we're in no rush with the pawns. We're just looking to nice steady away. And circumvent any attempts at the back rank checkmate. Which we said was a long way off. But the opponent's <laughs> he's, he's still going for it. He's making me laugh. Okay so just hide the king away now. So there's nothing else for them to do apart from try and get the king here, bring this rook here to attack the pawn on this side here like this. We <laughs> this is doing everything that we're saying. Oh dear. So gonna bring the rook here just to protect the pawn. Save his energy. Is he still gonna do it? 
so it's being mindful of that type oh he's still doing it <laughs> okay so realistically where can he go this is where he's targeting we've got a protector here so we can now start pushing these pawns up so let's start pushing but those types of moves are the types of moves that catch people out um, we think oh we're winning because we've got all this he's still going for it so well, um, there's nothing else for them to do really uh, let's go here but if you're asleep and you're not aware of that and you're just whoa, just pushing your pieces up and you're thinking you're winning but you're not taking care of your blind spots your back end area that's how you get caught out yay there we go come for the night and they've resigned so that was a good that was a good example I just want to see he wants a rematch okay let's go for a rematch it's a 15 minute one second game okay right okay cookie so we know the story of rematches but not bothered if they're coming with some stronger stronger stuff then at least we're getting some practice in got to practice against these um, tricky tactical type plays so sorry we didn't get to do the analysis on the last one but it was a fairly interesting game developing the creative logical thinking logical creative thinking queen is out Let's be bold. I don't really know why I do this attack on here. Really, normally I, I would just bring it here because I thought, well, this is a bit of a waste of time actually. Sometimes, you know, just attacking this pawn because I'm not really going to do the knight for a bishop for a rook type situation. I think the odd few occasions I have caught the, the opponent out, you know, landed the bishop here and they focused on there, so we've been able to take the pawn for free. So that's the only time I'd realistically put it in that position but I wouldn't do it for the knight for a bishop for the rook situation okay so they've got a load of plan coming now all the way onto our king side so we don't have to castle just yet could castle but and this is creative mind going whoa they've got all those pieces there look look at the massive threats that's going to happen he's going to get all his pieces and there's nothing happening yet so I can castle <laughs> honestly that's genuinely what happens yeah look at all them pieces look at the knight he's got the queen there he's got the bishop there they've, they're all clumping together around the king area so they're going to get me in a checkmate They've got to put some work in. The knight is blocking the queen. Where's the knight actually going? If he comes here, he's coming by himself. So he's not got any support. So I'm going to just push here. Open up white square bishop. He's going to want to open up here. For his dark square bishop to come down. But there's things that we can do to stop those if it is if it happens. There's no point in thinking about something that hasn't happened at this moment. Yes, it's good to look potentially with your calculations, but that's when we're getting brawled in making the wrong moves because we then, this is where I believe the devil finger comes in from my own gains. And um, when I look at the past, when I've gone, oh yeah, I've done a calculation and I'm gonna make this move. And then as I've gone to make the move, the hand then goes and now, in my current thinking the reason why the hand goes oh I found a better move is because creatively when we've done our calculation we've put in elements of doubt and fear about what the opponent can actually do to us that when we actually go and make the move with our hand if we're playing over the board um, when we go to make the move with our hand our brain goes no, there's lots of doubt about that. This one is better for sure. Bang. And it's been done with no no proper calculation, no historics or anything. 
and what's this night like we said this night what is the knight actually doing it's coming here wants the queen to come here but the, it's got nothing so i want to see what he's got he's gonna have to go back to whence they came um so that's the logical mind trying to knock the creative oh what has got the bishop for a knight rubbish thing going on oh you see i didn't think they would have a player like that but this is the rematch isn't it so he's wanting to go down in style so we'll grab i didn't think that they'd do that type of stuff yeah okay um there's no real benefits to that to doing that sort of stuff it looks scary um <laughs> that's why I didn't know what what's the knight going to do got the knight for a bishop thing we talked about that earlier on um, for me I personally don't like the knight for a bishop for a rook thing because you, you've still got less pieces on the board just because you've taken a rook off the board doesn't mean you've won the game because you've now got to jostle your pieces together um, with less pieces the rooks take a while to get into the game they're fairly flat in terms of the way that they function so if we've got these flexible bishops and knights hopefully we can make something of them and we have more material on the board equal on paper but more material as in minor pieces and main pieces so now they're having to overthink okay so that's an interesting situation they've actually gone for something that potentially is supposed to unsettle the situation now his bishop is still jammed in on the back white square bishop wants to get activated let's attack this queen i probably would have expected this pawn to drop down here so i'm happy that that hasn't you know to open up the dark square bishop queen's probably still going to want to stay in the game so it's probably coming round here that square bishop's got diagonal towards the king but I'm not I don't want a position like that I want to really get some active pieces going knight getting the knight in the game but where's it going really so we're just going to open up the knight anyway really want to be trapping this queen let's move the other side so that I think that's Look at that nice position there. Uh, I think that's better for us, you know, him moving that side. Knight up. Oh, knight up. Knight here. It's going to start dropping the pawns down. It's going to start dropping the bombs. We need to get activated. Knight here, move the bishop, knight there. It's all a bit long winded, isn't it? But I'm doing that anyway. I'm trying to do it with no fear, but with a bit of logic. Logical fear. <laughs> Logical creative fear. So you still got these at the back jammed in, which is good. And we're looking to jump bring this bishop back to get the knight here to put more pressure on the queen and he's almost kind of given us that position so if we go here and then if he's tempted to attack then he's actually given us the position we're wanting so it's more stealthy when the opponent actually is giving you the position it's, then it looks like you've not done it on purpose oh he's still going for it so we're going to go for the queen so he's given us that position that we wanted right from the early part of developing the knight so quite happy with that actually got two pieces on this pawn just need to get our rook activated a little bit maybe get the queen what's around the king yeah, so we've got two pieces there the knight don't really want to open up the king really do we take him with this one then it gives space for our queen to come here 
but then it's facing a rook. Rook can come attack the bishop. Which was best? Knight? Oh, well, we can do the exchange for the rook situation. Not that I'm happy with that, but I feel like our position's a lot better now, so we could go knight here. And then he can't push this pawn because the bishop's got the pin. So in essence, we could then go bishop. Do -do 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 -do. How are we gonna do that? I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take. See how far I'm willing to take it. Are we gonna go for the knight for a bishop for a rook situation? On paper. It looks good for us, really. But it depends. Oh, he's going for the bishop instead. I was just going to say, it depends if he opens up his dark square bishop or not. So he's attacking. So now, if we went. Whoops, don't move it. If we went here, attacking his rook, his rook then moves here. And then our bishop can go here and win his rook because it's a check. Obviously, the king can move to the side. Oh no, it can't because the bishop is there. So, I'm actually going to do that. So we don't have to do the rook for a knight and a bishop. But the problem that we have is his queen can just take our knight. But then our knight can take his queen, so there's no problem. Oh, come on! Wow! It's not worked yet, so I don't know why I'm celebrating. It just feels right. I'm looking to see if there's anything. Pawn could push onto the knight. What happens there? We get a higher piece. We get a higher piece. The king comes there. Then the knight can take the pawn. Do I have a comeback position? Maybe I don't overextend the knight then. Maybe I bring the knight back. Bishop still protecting. Pawn could come down. Yeah, that's going too far. A four move calculation should be okay as usual. So I've got to remember this is the rematch, isn't it? Isn't it? So they'll come out all guns blazing, especially with the knight for a bishop for a rook to attack. But we try to explain that it's not always the best thing to do. But now we're sort of reversing that concept to say, well, potentially this may be a different way of doing that without actually having to give up your knight and bishop but you actually get the rook or do we so if he's thinking going there then the bishop can come this is the story ah we did say the pawn could come down and attack the knight didn't we so we then said well we're going to get the bigger fish does that story change I'm, def I'm definitely not doing that. I'm just thinking, is there a fork somewhere on his queen? I don't think there is, though, is there? So, let's just take the bigger fish, like we said. He may have just take the knight. He's not taking the knight, so he's taken, like we said. And this was where we said, well, if we take this pawn, then we don't have an out because he's... His pawn is here. Can't come there because I'll get attacked. Can only go there, but then I'm just jammed in the corner. But then if we go there, then we can come here because there's no pawn there. But he does have a dark square bishop. So I'm just thinking then, okay, so that's the escape square. So if we take the pawn, he's got his queen on there, but he's not going to exchange his queen on. 
So then he does have his bishop, but his bishop won't have any support. So it looks like we're going to get the pawn clean. But he's still playing on. Okay, so that's the first one. We'll go for that pawn. I'm just trying to see if there's something else. Um, he proposes a tape back. I don't know why he's proposing a tape back. Everything looks hunky dory here. I just need to make sure I'm not falling into a funky trap. Could bring the knight back around. No. My king is still in the middle. My rook is not developed. I'm gonna take the pawn. I can't see anything else better for myself. potential safety zone don't really like getting my knight trapped you know you know you go so far up and you go whoa 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 and then suddenly it can't move anywhere so if, we, if we could move this knight move this knight out of the way somehow and get this queen here that would be quite nice wouldn't it no, oh, he's getting checks on me already. Damn. If I push that, then I'm sort of holding myself to ransom answer with the pawn. If I bring the king down, his queen's still got space to come here because nothing's protecting. I'm just going to do that for now. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It's not over, look, the fighting. Now, is this one of those situations where past pawns want to be pushed? And that, that is a good statement to make. Past pawns want to be pushed. If we go here, it's not forced to take, but it takes. Bishop takes. I'm on his rook. His Bishop defends, Bishop takes, Queen takes. That's a whole heap of take, take, take. Queen comes down. Oh, no, no, no. Because the Bishop was, would have gone, so I need to move the Knight. I was just about to go Queen check. If we push up, we've blocked everything down, so it's all pretty samey. Many pushes, maybe. Yeah, if he pushes. It's all about that area, isn't it? Take. I think it's better taking on this occasion because there's this slight movement here of getting this diagonal, putting pressure on my kid. Oh, what's he done? What's he done? He's taken the knight. What has he done? Okay. Right, to check here on the king. He's going to come across. He wants to get that. And if the bishop was here, we'd be able to get a check later. This queen's just going to take our pawn. Doesn't deserve to have our pawn. If we push there, if we go there, and his queen takes our pawn, he's protecting this area. Hmm. Bishop can protect the pawn. Uh, there must be something I can do. Queen here protecting the pawn, looking to come here to put a check on the king, or even to here. Knight's protecting this pawn. It's got a two on one though. 
It's got the knight and the queen on there. So if we push the pawn up, oh, we can't push the pawn up. We've got we're in a little bit of a situation. Knight protects, but it's still only one. So the knight takes, knight takes, queen takes. Oh well, it's a horse of a different colour, isn't it? We're plus three, you know, somehow. <laughs> plus three, so that's quite a lot. Now, is it one, two, three, four? One, two, three, four, so it's pawns. Could do that if it's knight takes, then knight takes, queen takes. Queens on the dark square. I'm not sure, you know, I'm not sure. So we could still go here, couldn't we? Even though his knight's going to take. Yeah, let's still go here. So now it's still going to take, we're free, we're plus three and we can put a check on the king and be a bit of a menace just for a split moment anyway. And it's going to open up a bit of space for the rook, but I think he's going to try and hide his king into the corner here, you know, around the background here, that type of thing. It doesn't take the pawn. He's not taking the pawn. Defend. Well, it looks like he's defending this. Well, we don't need to go that far, do we? We can go here with the check on the king. He's wanting to get into this square here. Uh, that's a bit annoying, isn't it? So we can bring the knight up. What can block there? If we push that, then he's. he's Kind of forced to take, or could just push gently here. No. Uh, let's go with that and just take this pawn with a check. Maybe, might not look too good. Let's see. The full of the knight could reach him, but he can't. Knights are good in these situations. You know when you can trap the king up. Look at him running. Damn. Uh, this is going to hide behind the bishop here. Let's go there. Oh no. Can I, am I not allowed to take this bishop? Yes, okay. So he's hiding, but check, 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 pawn, check, bishop, it's on a white square, rook, maybe, Let's see if he can squeeze there, now it's going to come with a blocker, two minutes, eleven, they're on six minutes, yeah, now it's come with the blocker, hmm, Everything's on a white square, man. Dark square bishop's not having much fun. Um, <laughs> we can't touch here, and I don't think his king can go anywhere, can it? Because now he's um, got checkmated. Whoa, brilliant. Oh, I really enjoyed them, guys. Thank, thank you very much. That was interesting indeed. Okay, so... I think he's flashing a rematch, but I'm not playing another one, Cracky. I'm going to take a break.